Aaron hates this tile. I hate this tile. All the tile goes down the toilet. I'm Darren Jett. I'm an interior designer. I'm going to be helping two people redesign their bathrooms with two very different budgets. And this is Redesign. This is John. John wants to brighten the space, but on a budget. And this is Aaron, and Aaron wants to do a full renovation on his bathroom. I would say the first thing that I noticed about both of these bathrooms is that their footprint is quite small. We're going to have to definitely optimize what we're working with. And two, there's no window. So both of these are quite dark. You might look at the footprint of these bathrooms and think, there's nothing I can do. But actually, you can really do so, so, so much. All right, let's do it. The main issues of the space are that we have tiles that we don't like, we have bathrooms that need more storage, we have bathrooms that need a bit more personality, and we're going to have to figure out ways to brighten them up. The first issue we're going to tackle is this horrible tile. This tile is not great. I don't think we have all the time to talk through all the reasons why it's not great. I see this tile all the time. You know, it's a new development tile. It's sort of a contractor special. The reason why you see it is because it's cheap and it's available. I think though that for a bathroom that is lacking natural light, for a bathroom that's relatively small, to me this feels a bit dark and it honestly just feels a bit dingy. If you don't have a big budget and you want something that's very quick and easy and also can be removed later on, do a peel and stick tile. John told us he loves mid-century modern. Why don't we do something that has a bit of a, a geometric pattern? Perhaps we do a checkerboard for instance. How cool would that be? I think doing a very simple textured wallpaper on here would go miles. If you want something that reads almost like a neutral and reads almost as though it is one surface but has slight variations and slight interest, grass cloth is a great way to go. It's also quite mid-century modern. For the renovation, we will replace the tile with stone. Aaron hates this tile. I hate this tile. All the tile goes down the toilet. Tile in general, especially a subway tile that's a smaller format, it has a lot of grout lines. Grout lines in a bathroom are always a problem area. So think about removing all of that tile and replacing it with something beautiful, large format stone perhaps, and what that might feel like and look like. I wanna keep that slab material at wainscot height. Wainscoting simply means that it comes up to about, you know, waist height or a little bit higher. Above that, I simply wanna paint everything, a beautiful color. The second issue is that there's not enough storage. Currently, John has a few things sort of kind of all over the place. All of this stuff right here on the toilet, let's move it. Let's get it off the back of the toilet. I never like that, it never looks good. He has a lot of space up here above the toilet, a big empty blank wall. I think what would be so nice is for him to actually get a shelf that runs the full length here. And look, he can do something very simple. He can move the diffuser up there. He can have some towels nicely rolled up right there. Maybe you could even lean some art up against the wall to give a little bit of personality. Little things like this go a long, long way. And for Aaron's bathroom, I really want to give him space for all of his products. So Aaron wants to convert his tub into a walk-in shower. I think that's a really smart thing from an investment point of view. A lot of times when we do a shower for clients, we run into the situation where we realize that all of their products are sort of out on display. You really want all those things to be sort of tucked away and hidden. What we can do in a bathroom like this is actually do that by building out the sort of wall right here between the shower and the vanity. So if we're working within a small bathroom already and someone says to me, I don't need a bathtub, I really only take showers, get rid of that tub, give you more floor space within the same square footage, and you just have a much nicer experience when you shower. Aaron has a lot of product. Having storage is paramount. The third main issue is a lack of lighting. Lighting in a bathroom, you never only want light up here. You're only gonna see all of the stuff up here on your forehead that you don't wanna see. So with John, right now the lighting looks kind of like a serial killer lives here. They make medicine cabinets on the market right now for very, very cheap. They actually have integrated lighting within them and that light is so flattering. A bathroom should never have cold lighting like this. No room should have cold lighting like this. You don't look good. What you need to have is very, very warm lighting. Typically in an apartment, I would say 2700 is a great temperature. When you go to the hardware store, we'll say what temperature the light is. Oftentimes, if it doesn't have a temperature like 2700, it might say soft white, it might say daylight. 
you always want to go towards soft white. Soft white is just a warmer light. Some people in a bathroom want to be a little bit bluer, so it's a bit more true to daylight. This bathroom looks like it's almost 4,000. I would say definitely 3,000 max. For Aaron's bathroom, we will maintain the lighting that's in the ceiling. That will be on its own dimmer. We will also have separate dimmers on lights that are integrated into the medicine cabinets here. That would be behind a diffused piece of glass so that whenever you turn it on, you don't really see all the bulbs. All you see is the beautiful light coming through. We wanna make it lighter and brighter on a budget. I think if I came in and I said, you know, you're gonna have to keep the tile, you're gonna have to keep X, Y, Z. What you can definitely do on a budget is styling. Let's replace the things that are easily replaceable. The shower curtain, the bath mat, towels on the rod. Keep those nice, fluffy, and white. Keep them very simple and very beautiful, and it makes everything just feel cleaner and fresher. For the renovation, we would get rid of all of the plumbing fixtures. I really, really dislike a white fixture. To do a renovation and end up with a white toilet and a white sink and a white tub is so uninspiring to me. I think that for someone like Aaron, who constantly has people over, not only do you want to have your own personal, beautiful space, but you also want to have people who come over and remember something, right? I think a very easy solution is to simply have different colored fixtures. Um, why have white when you can have a color? So we're gonna give him a black toilet. We walk into John's bathroom and we can't even tell that it wasn't renovated. It actually looks really, really cool. We have a checkerboard floor. We have cool tile on the walls. We have a beautiful textured wallpaper. We have a lot more storage and styling and everything feels much more fresh than it did before. Walking into Aaron's bathroom, I'm entering Aaron's world, a space that has a beautiful stone on the floor and on the wainscoting. We're giving him a lot of storage with a medicine cabinet. We're also replacing his tub with a shower. The same footprint, but it actually feels so much bigger. It's much cleaner, it's more modern, it's more user-friendly, and ultimately, it's more Aaron. Do you want advice on your space? Submit in the description below.